Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Horse Center. Tonight, you see just two faces, mine and Sean. <laughs> Unfortunately, our guest, Wayne Catalano, is uh, on his way out to New York for Aloha West, running on Saturday at the uh, Belmont Stakes Day. Unfortunately, his flight was delayed, and now he's in flight. So he was expecting to be on the ground. When uh, we got started, but well, unfortunately, he's uh, he's not on the ground and he's in the air. So that makes it a tough call for him. I know you can get that in flight. Um, you can get the in flight. Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, in Wi-Fi. But I don't know that he wants to spend four hundred dollars to talk to us for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know how that worked. We've had people uh, drive. We've had people park. We've had, you know had people go to their cars to be on the show, but we've had nobody flying. So yeah, so that would have been interesting. I mean, that would have been cool, right? <laughs> They would have seen him flying first class, feet up, you know, seat back, just chilling on his way to go out to uh, see Aloha West run on on Saturday, Sean, in a race that I think is going to be pace challenging for Aloha West because short field, a couple of horses with some speed. That, that's the one with uh, Jack Christopher in it, right? I believe so. I was actually going to pull it up now, but I, I do know I was looking at Aloha West. I saw the name and I didn't really um, give him much of a chance in there i mean for wayne's sake i hope he does well but mm -hmm. I, w I wasn't seeing it this time you know who did well is jordan parks right so there's jordan looking spiffy in uh looking good in that gear for the jockey survivor champion a one of a kind if he puts it on ebay you know sean and i'd be willing to sign it maybe it'll become a uh, one of those you know one of those things that must get <laughs> <laughs> you so know jordan's usually liking things commenting things I haven't really seen that much today, so he's busy answering all those messages you said he was going to get. Yeah, he's getting DM like <laughs> I see in the comments. He's got like eleven, like like eleven likes. That's more than we ever get. So way to go, Jordan, you the man. There you go. <laughs> uh, so well, while we wait for the Lone Star report with Erica, let's talk about the news today, Sean. So Texas and Hissa airing out their issues with one another. So it looks to me like uh, Texas is going to kill the care of the paramutual wagering on site and result in a prohibition of simulcast export wagering. So it looks like they still have some issues to iron out there, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they all got issues um, to iron out and figure out. Um, but eventually they'll get it worked out again. Um, you know, what was it? A couple weeks ago, Texas said they weren't going to race at all. Then they changed their tone on that so um everybody will play hardball till july 1st and then we'll see well i do expect there'll be some concessions but i do think you're gonna see i mean texas is texas right they're they're a different breed down there <laughs> and they got that sense of independence good for them and you know they're gonna make sure that things go according to the book so to speak speaking of uh hissa this is an inevitable result of government oversight, and that is the National Thoroughbred Racing Association is opening a, a lobbying office in Washington, D.C. Hmm. Why do you think that is, Sean? <laughs> I, you know, I honestly didn't get a chance to read this one, so I, I don't know what's going on here. Well, what it is is whenever you have government setting regulation, you always have people with the, you know, with the deep pockets full of money trying to lobby the folks in Congress to see things their way, right? Well, yeah, yeah. So now that the federal government is overseeing the horse racing across the country, well, of course, you have to have representation in Washington, D.C. So that mm, the way that works, I guess, now we know how these, these politicians who make $190,000 a year somehow own four million fifty million dollar mansions yeah and we knew that would happen once you started getting them involved you know not charles saying well yeah, well i love the sport um but no sport's perfect and it definitely needed some changes but this probably was not the way to go no i mean i just you know we talked about this the yeah other we night. talk about it all the time the more the layers of bureaucracy you put on something the more difficult it becomes to manage 
I mean, just think about, you know, like, <laughs> some of the, just think about going to like the Department of Motor Vehicles, which always seems to be on the bad end of jokes. But anytime <laughs> you kind of walk into a government building, Social Security, hell, you got to pick a number and sit for two, three hours, like if you're in a doctor's office. So I don't know that that's going to be the situation with HISA. But the fact that they have to open up a um, the fact that they have to open up a lobbying office in Washington D.C. to me is all you need to know. Charles says he agrees to disagree with you, Sean. Are, are you saying it's a perfect sport? I mean, I'm I'm the king of trying to be positive with the sport, but you know, you still got the cheaters and everything else, and you have that everywhere. So. I yeah, mean, I, yeah, yeah, I'm not. So you show me a business where there's not a cheater. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm but saying. Let me, let me just put it this way. I don't know that there's any bigger cheater in than Wall Street. Right. And I'm a big backer of financial markets. Right. The, the free market. But we don't have to rewind the clock very far to 2008 when the Wizards of Wizards of Smart, all of these uh, Ivy League graduates who are supposed to be you know, the elites and the smartest amongst us almost blew up the entire world because they don't have any idea how to assess risk properly. Right. Right. And then, of course, Hank Paulson walks in and then we're getting off to a totally different tangent here and tells George Bush that if you don't uh, if you if, if you don't bail everybody out after they let Lehman go bankrupt, that's the end of the country. Well, if the end of the country comes because you have to bail out Lehman, it's skating on thin ice anyway, and eventually it's going to fall apart. I happen to believe that the United States is far sturdier than a couple of uh, people losing their houses on the Hamptons. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So he's saying it's the best wagering sport on the play. Therefore it is the perfect sport. And that, in that regard, you're right. It is the perfect wagering sport because those other ones you're betting against the house and you see what the house builds in Las Vegas, <laughs> multi a <laughs> billion dollar casinos, right? Right. right. Yes, you don't see multi-billion dollar horse racing tracks being built all across the country. No, so it, it lets you know that the player indeed has a chance. Uh, the only thing I don't like, though, Charles, is I and we talked about this the other day with Eddie C, is I do feel like the syndicates should be cut off about two to three minutes before post time so that they don't you know, affect the odds quite the way they do. This weekend, Sean, is the Belmont Stakes on Saturday, getting ready to get out the wagering guide. My shoulders are sore from being such on my desk all day since 7 o'clock, type, type, typing, getting car carpal tunnel syndrome. But one person who's looking forward to Saturday is Dylan Davis, going to get his first triple crown mount in the Belmont Stakes. What do you think about that? Oh, it's much deserved. I mean, Dylan, ever since he came back from that injury, he's been a complete different jockey. And he's been, the, you know, he, he won the uh, the uh, jockey standings um, in New York, too. So, I mean, he's doing well, and he deserves it. Yeah, he's going to get a good shot in here. But uh, I'm not sure who's he going to ride in that race again. He's going to be on um, Golden Glider, right? I think yeah, that's the he's on. Probably doesn't have a shot to win, I think, right? No, I don't think so. Um, but usually, when you get your first triple crown mount and stuff like that, you don't always get a get one that's on the win. But at least you get it; you get to experience it. And he'll definitely be on uh, one. He'll he'll win a triple crown race before you know his career is done. Yeah, you would think if he gets a new, you got to have the opportunities to win one. So if this is the first opportunity, well, maybe he uh, maybe he'll need a few more opportunities to get that done. So while we're talking about the Belmont and the whole weekend there, Friday and Saturday, what are your thoughts about all these, like, I, something seems a little wrong to me because you have all of these very short fields and some of these big races. So what do you make of that? Um, I really don't make much of it. It's been going on for a while now. Um, and also a lot of these big races leading up to the Triple Crown races have the five, six horse fields. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the state of the sport right now. And honestly, you know, I mentioned earlier, I mean, look at the card. Look at the horses you got running. Echo Zulu, uh, Regal Glory, uh, Blown Rock, Fearless, Jack Christopher, Latruska, Malatat, Flightline, Speaker's Corner, Gufo. You got a whole list of talented horses running. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got to look at the positive on that part about you're going to sit down Saturday and watch a Belmont. And you're going to see a lot of talent. And if you add two or three horses to each race, are they really going to change your pick anyway? Now I know they hurt your value at uh, 
in the exotics. But I think what you got to do is you got to do your pick four, pick five, picks. There's some horses in there that you can really rely on as much as any other horse. Yeah, but I think um, what, some single. of these horses are going to go off at just in high quality races. They're going to go off at well under one to one odds. I mean, right, right, right. So, so even if you play the pick four, in it goes chalky. Up it, up it. So instead of doing your dollar pick four, if you, you know, up it, do ten dollar pick four. If you think three singles are going to win, and in that race that you have open, um, play a bunch of horses and hope to catch a price. Um, and if you do, you know, they're still going to pay. There's going to be well, a lot I don't of know. you can't if you up it and you play a bunch of horses and you try to catch a price. Well, no, no, no. I, mean, I, I think you're kind of. I think you're kind of. I think you have to do it one of two ways with these short fields. You either have to pick a favorite or two that you're going to play away from and not put them on your tickets, or you're going to have to go like two, 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 all the way down with your, with your short shot. And the one that you think is a value, not the, probably not the second choice, but your third or fourth choice with it and hope that maybe a couple of your third or fourth choices come through because I don't think you can have it both ways. So Laura commented about Penn national. I've done this at Penn national. You bet the f- two favorites in a pick three, and then in the third race, you bet two or three horses, and you do a $10 pick three, you still make a bunch of money um, if you hit that. Um, so you're just going to have to up your bet and get a little bit more creative. Um, some of these horses, though, okay, six-horse field, they're going to go off at well, – There's a bunch five. of five-horse fields. Sean. Five-horse fields are fine. Mm-hmm. You did go off at two to five, but they didn't go off at four to five if there's an eight-horse field. Well, I think four to five is better than two to five. Yeah, but I mean, the, we're way, the way I look, the, the way I do math, eighty cents is two times better than forty cents. It is, but I mean, look, the state of horse racing is that it was going to be five or six horses. Plus, some of these horses, if you had a horse, you're going to run your horse against Flightline Malatat. Um, I, I think. I, you know, speaking of Flightline, I, I think if there is one of these three to five favorites that's vulnerable, I think he's actually one of them. And I think he's probably of the heavy favorites. And I know I'm probably a little bit crazy on this, but we can talk about this tomorrow. But I think of all the big time favorites, Jack Christopher, um, and some of the others, I think he is the he's the most vulnerable one because he's not run outside of California, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when you see these California horses that dominated California try to carry that form all the way across the country, sometimes it doesn't happen. And Speaker's Corner, yeah, the horse that's been on the Belmont track and found the winner winner circle. So we know that Speaker's Corner can be up at the front, probably going to put the heat on Flight Line around the track. And if Flight Line doesn't like the Belmont surface, hasn't trained there, best I could tell, the workouts were all still in California. So I, I think that's one, if I were putting a ticket together where I was playing against a favorite, that would be one I would leave off. Ooh, I don't know if I could leave him off, but uh... – yeah, the reason is you got Speaker's Corner in there. so And that is the race Aloha West is in, too. So mm-hmm. Aloha West is in tough there. Um, but if those two do hook up, I guess Aloha West would be the other one that could win it. So Yeah, it could well be. Huh? I fade all California horses and make a ton of money. Don't bet them never will. Yeah, I see. I think, too, Charles, that's a question that Flight Line's going to have to answer. Coming across, I can't, man, I can't. I, there was a horse I had in mind that would look so dominant out east. I mean, out west. They brought it over here and just couldn't do anything, and then it went back out west and kept winning again. So, I think that's a tough trip from the east, from the west coast to the east coast. You yeah. know what I mean? So we'll find out. I think that's one that's very vulnerable. I think there's a lot of other ones on the card that aren't three to five that with the pace set up really works to their favor. One of which I think is Latruska. I mean, when you look at that race, she gets the lead, she wins. Who's going to challenge her for the front spot? Yeah. Um, and she's just, she's a rare horse. So yeah, I would definitely single her. Um, and she doesn't need the lead neither. She's won off the lead before. So, but the point is when she gets the lead, she doesn't lose. She, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when she, I don't know who's going to challenge her for the lead. I wouldn't try to beat Latruska. I can tell you that. Right. So that's the way I see that as well, Sean. Looking forward to uh, seeing how that all plays out. But I think another factor in all this could be, Sean, rain. Uh, it, you know, all the time, <laughs> especially especially on the East Coast here. 
Well, Jared, who lives in New York, says it's supposed to be a uh, really wet Saturday. So I, I think when you do your handicapping, you probably want to take a look at the weather forecast prior to the um, – to, let's let's pull it up right now. And what thinks about that is um, the turf fields are averaging about ten horses a race. If you add rain to them and you start taking them off the turf, you're going to start getting them down to five six horse fields as well. Yeah, I think you know, but it could favor some of those uh, international horses then, right? Because they're used to running on that uh, on that surface, my friend. So we unfortunately they don't have the daily out map for for, for a Saturday yet. On the, on the weather reports, but it looks like Friday's supposed to be sunny. At first, it was supposed to be a uh, so a Friday's card, if you look at the weather report here. Just waiting for our friend Erica to join us. So Friday's card looks like it's going to be pretty clean. Uh, and then Saturday, let's take a look at Saturday. Delight for them to take the races off. Yeah, I agree. I, agree, I don't, but I don't think they will. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely don't want to. But, but Jared says they're expecting a downpour, though. And that's see. a problem. That will be a problem. So, yeah, Saturday periods of rain, 91% chance of rain. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty strong indication that it's going to be wet there. But I do suspect that they will still run those turf, turf races. But I do think you'll still see some scratches because of the wetness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's just a wait and see. Um, at least Friday's clear. And then maybe – you know, maybe you have one of those things where a couple days away yet, you have those things that gets pushed back a couple hours and that's all you need and you beat the rain. Um, you never know. So while, let's see, let's see what Charles says, wet rail kills speed. So expect horses that are good speed horses on the rail to fade late. Yeah, so hopefully that'll be the case. We could play against that. Now, we don't have a guest today, Sean, unfortunately. Um, our Erica will join us in a moment. I, I know that for certain. I confirm that today. But tomorrow... To make up for not having a guest today, we'll have two guests tomorrow, Sean. Tell us yep. who's coming tomorrow. We'll have Akeisha Courtney again. She has joined us before on the Player's Edge. Now it's and, a key, now it's it's Acacia. Uh, Akeisha Courtney a, Clement. A, 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 Acacia Clement. Yes, yes. And uh, we'll have Joel Rosario. Hmm. So that should be fun. So we'll make up for having a lack of guests tonight with two tomorrow. So if you have questions for Acacia or for Joel Rosario, make sure you check in with us tomorrow at, we're going to start an hour earlier than usual tomorrow. We'll start at 8, 8.30 p.m. Eastern for the Player's Edge. Uh, so if you have questions for either of them, make sure you join in and let us know, right? Yeah, absolutely. Barring we the people going wire to wire, he might, I, 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 he might, I love Nest. You, you think Nest? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know a lot see. of people are on that Nest. Yeah, Joel's really going to come, so make sure you check that out. The, um, if Secret Oath couldn't do it against, I don't know that Nest can do it. Well, right. It's kind of weird that a lot of people were against Secret Oath, but the same people are kind of giving Nest a shot. Um, and I'm the opposite of that. I thought Secret Oath had a shot, and I don't see it with Nest. Mm -hmm. I don't see it either. Derf Sprint read it maybe ever. So, yeah, John, hook him up with some questions tomorrow. Wheel, the people will not hit the board. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't see that with him having such a pace advantage. Um, okay, he might not win if you think that, um, but I can't see him not hitting the board. I think he's got an early pace advantage too, Sean. That's going to make it difficult for others to beat him. Yeah. The I only question to me is the distance. Outside of that, um, if he can handle the distance, I don't even think he's going to need to really run that fast early on to have the lead. Right. Yeah. So, the only thing is, you know how that goes, that somebody in this field, maybe one of the long shots, changes their style a little bit, knows that, that their only shot is to get out there early, and they put a little pressure on it. Yeah, but I, I see, I, I think if you try to do that, right, then you've just blown your chances to win. Maybe, but you could I, also – I think, I think the only horse in the field that might be able to get away with that one, get, get away with that is, I think um, – he can't get the distance. Bottom line, yeah, Charles, I, I think that could be a difficult part. That mile and a half question is going to be an interesting thing to me. I think the one horse in that mix that should be 80 to 1 again is Rich Strike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know because because I'm not sure. It's not. I mean, he's training great at Churchill Downs, right? But Belmont Park isn't Churchill Downs. Yeah. Wow. So 
I would like to have seen him train nicely at Belmont, but I don't even think he has a workout there yet, does he? Um, not published, at least on what I'm looking at. So John Miller says he says Nest is going to stalk and then pounce. To me, the horse that I think has a chance, let me pull up the, the PPs here real quick. Cause I have every horse from every one of the stakes races in my mind right now, so I, I'm, I'm having a hard time differentiating uh, who's in what race. Say, um, is there one that starts yeah. with the creative, right? Yeah, Sorry. creative minister. That's exactly where I was going to go to um, if you want a horse that might be able to stay a little closer. You think yeah, creative minister is the one I think is going to have a shot. You think Rich Strike is going to be on the pace? I think if I there's a horse, be. I think if there's a horse that's going to be on the pace, the one it's going to be is John Ortiz's horse. I think Joel Rosario. And we'll ask him about this tomorrow, but I think he's going to try to push Barber Road a little bit closer to the front. If you go back to his, you know, what am I looking at here? Second, third, and fourth start. He did exactly that, mm -hmm. where he went second. In, you know, second and third, and you finish first or second. So, right. So, um, I, I think if there's one horse that's going to be that's been in the back that's going to switch tactics come Belmont Day, it's going to be Barber Road. That's the one to me that I think could take a different way um, than he normally has in the Belmont Stake, Sean. Yeah. And I mean, that's a huge, no offense to Ray Lou Gutierrez, but that is a huge upgrade right there. Um, that could really make a difference. No, just wait till Ray Lou, you call him and ask him to come on the show. <laughs> I've tried to get him on before and haven't been able to do so. So, now, you know, then and John Ortiz popped in on the show this morning with Terry and I, I talking that. about yeah. Delaware. So that was fantastic. Barbara Road is a horse that's shown speed in the past, but it's 12 furlongs. So you never know. Yeah, that, that longer distance might save yeah. a little bit for the end. The only thing that, see, this is what always gets me about the pace. You play the horse, you know, we the people because it should have an easy lead. And I do that a lot. And then those gates open and he doesn't get the early lead easily. And your whole thought process is out. Um, or you do the opposite and say he wants, you want to beat him and he gets an early lead and then you're done. So you, you, <laughs> you got to go one way or the other with we, the people. Well, I think in that it's clear, race, I think it's in clear that race the, 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 the thing that really works to we, the people's advantage is that there's really, I mean, I look at the pace set up on the field there's really – he's the only one that has a history of getting to the lead in, in winning. Everybody else is either a pressure horse. There's only one really that I see as a pressure horse, maybe two or three max. But every other horse in this field is a closer. So to, if there were some other pressure horses and it was a little more balanced, but the fact that there's one, two, three, four, four horses that are straight closers, the only way they've won, and then you got another two that are pressure closers, so they tend to be in the middle – or back so that's six out of eight so 75 percent of the field likes to be middle back and that to me opens up the door for it to uh, for we the people to get the lead so, yeah don't forget yeah. Five, five. i think i i i agree with you i think she's gonna get uh she's gonna try but that mile and a half might be tough for her too yeah um yeah i, I just don't see it with nest and i was really uh Really big on the other Philly, but I am not big Secret on that. So I guess that means we ought to play Nest on show. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I switched it down. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't see it, but I mean, you got Jose Ortiz, so. Um, yeah, he's not having the strongest meet so far, though, up in New York. Yeah, and, you know, that's the other thing about We the People. His last race was at Belmont, and he crushed, so that's good, too, for We the People. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think Nest will prompt the pace and sit the trip. Don't forget the five pounds. We are waiting for right now. Erica's in the waiting room, but unfortunately the video is not working right now. So as soon as she gets her video up, we'll get right on to our clockers report. Tomorrow, Terry and I will be back at 12 o'clock to preview Belmont Park with our, uh, our, our horse racing today show at our Belmont Park picks with the – Pick four, the hot dog pick four, the primary pick four, our box it ups today. I managed to take home the, the late pick four, and I could have probably just saved a lot of money on that prime rib because a lot of my top picks came home and came home at low prices. So maybe tomorrow we'll try to hit some better prices like that, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so you're the chart writer at Penn? All right, that's cool. So I think uh, – I really like Nest. Yeah, Terry, I know. You 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 always like the 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 lady horses, right? You were on secret <laughs> hold there too. Rich strikes two races at at the call and second call. All right, so I'll take a look at the uh 
the race, two races at first call and second call. I'll take a look at them. I, I was looking at all the numbers today. Ask Erica. She knows I can handicap. I trained her at Lone Star last year. Cool. Uh, that's cool. So I will, uh, she's beyond just a moment. I know she had mentioned that, uh, you know, there were some other chart callers that she knew that she perhaps wanted to get together with and do a show with John. So if you're interested in doing a show here on Horse Racing Radar TV for talk a little bit about what it is you guys do, we're more than open to have that make that happen. Right, Sean? Absolutely. And speaking of Penn National, after uh, Tyler Connors, uh, big Friday night, he was the Jockey Skilled Jockey of the Week. So well, I think Tyler based upon his day, he should be. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. But you know how that goes. It's voting, so you never know. Yep, indeed. So so I'm going to check out for one second. Yeah, that's me. Uh, yeah, so I know she had mentioned it before. Let me, let me see if we can get Erica to come in, though, because it looks like she's having some problems with her microphone and her camera. So I'm going to – hold on a second. Let me come in here. And let me send him an email, Sean. Any other things that are on your mind? Uh, no, we covered a lot of it. Um, you know – I think Saturday has got a lot of talent and we got to look at that positive side of that part. Um, the Belmont's kind of disappointing definitely with eight horses and just, just the talent wise. Um, it really, it really comes down to the the pace and what you think about that. Mm -hmm. Who's going to get that distance, but that's always the case. Um, that one, I, you know, I have a harder time coming up with the uh, value because uh, Modangle is going to be tough too, since, his bet one of his best races was at Belmont. Yeah, I think Modango could be tough. I do think he's going to be behind the pace though, so it's going to be a, 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 a. Yeah, he's not going to change his style. No, so I think it's going to be one of those things where you're going to have a bunch of horses that are coming late, and then it's just a matter of which one is going to have the most giddy up and go at the end. And his late pace numbers are on par with some others, so I, I gave him a slight edge over Rich Strike. But if Rich Strike could be a little bit more forwardly placed, that would be uh that would be a, a big plus because he does have that late kick. And I know he's working like a like a magician down at Churchill Downs. You see those workouts, they're off the charts. So we'll see what he if he can bring that up to California, up to uh I think John De Silva's parks. For the chart caller? I don't know. It just a great I, I see up in socials it's uh race official at parks, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure what he all does there, but yeah, so it looks like Erica's having a hard time connecting. I guess, John, I didn't do as good a job making sure I showed her how to get connected to the microphone and the camera <laughs> as you did on training her to be a chart caller. Right? Yeah, before we came on, too, uh, I was alive in the pick four for Canterbury. They have that low 10%. Canterbury has been a great track to play, that low 10% um, takeout in early pick four. And I also had two parts of the pick five, single, and then I had some coverage. I had four horses in the fourth race. And I told myself, play $10 on one of the bigger shots. And I didn't do it. You know, one of those times you say no. And a 25 to 1, the one I was considering, the eight horse wins. Mm -hmm. And it was actually more than 25 to 1 because it paid $58 to win. So I don't know why you, you know, when you tell yourself no is always the time you should tell yourself yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, that's happened far too many times for me. I don't know what is going on with Erica. Maybe I'll just text her and tell her to use her phone. I don't. I mean, she's had no problem getting connected before, right? No. I don't know what the story is. I do knew. You know, it's just one of those nights, Sean, where things just aren't meant to go right, right? Yeah, it tends to happen. Um, mm -hmm. We can talk about next week too. We have uh, jockey Kevin Racky from Emerald Downs. Just a few weeks ago, he won like five, ra five or six races on a card. Um, Tuesday, we have Ricardo Chappi. Speaking of uh, Penn National. And then uh, Wednesday, we have Gerald Delp. Um, he's got a background trainer. His dad was big. Um, and we can talk all kinds of stuff with him. So, yeah. So, also, next week, something the is the uh, – those Ascot races are going to uh, happen in England. So, instead of having just a foreign Friday, Tom and I, we're going to have a foreign week. Uh, so, we're going to cover every single day of the Ascot races – and I might not make it to the horse center shows. I might have a substitute host because I don't want to be on YouTube all day, every day, <laughs> one day through Friday, and then get us banned or something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, I was looking at John's comment. Wish we could get more horses. I'm assuming he says pen, but, you know, that seems to be a problem everywhere. Let's see. 
I'm restarting my computer and I connect, can't connect to the. She, so she's restarting her computer because she couldn't connect. So hopefully we'll have Erica in a moment. I hope her computer's not like my old computer was, uh, where it would take me. How long, Sean, to get that thing to turn on? <laughs> Too long. That one would take about an hour, hour and a half. So any other news we can think of along the way, Sean? Ah. Uh. I don't think so. I mean, you covered a lot of my, uh, you know, I was, I was a little salty about all the negative stuff going on about the short horse fields. And, you know, uh, you brought that up. Um, so Charles is still alive at a pick five with the king. Oh, that should pay well if that happens. Yeah. And how long to that race? Uh, Hissa, so, so you folks that are in the, in the business, do you really expect Hissa to make things a lot worse? I, I, I just think bureaucracy is never good, right? No, no. I agree with Thomas Jefferson. Who are these better angels that oversee us? I mean, people in the business know their business better than a, a bureaucrat does. All right. Let's go, Erica. So <laughs> we can move on to something else. Let me see if I can pull up another news story, Sean, real quick. See what else is going on out there um, in the horse racing world. Oh, I will say, since we're on the topic of uh, Canterbury, we have a uh, jockey, Lindy Wade, on uh, Monday the 20th. Uh-huh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You, you ready, Erica? You got yourself all set up and ready to go? Here we go. She says she's ready. She's in the background talking to me. Hello, Erica. How are Hi. you? Hi. Hi, guys. Doing well. How are you guys? Good. You're fighting with your computer today, are you? Yeah. So I'm currently on my phone, but yeah, my laptop is just, it's, it's being just junk right now so we're just gonna throw it away for tonight so you're just gonna do it like that so john miller says hi he says that he had a hand in training you and also one of your fellow <laughs> chart callers at Penn national so yeah. he says, yes that's me yep he's great john's great hi john so uh, some of the folks who've been paying attention to the erica star report it's a word they've been using for you lately they're very thankful they said and you should bring this up to the uh, racing office that they didn't pay attention to Lone Star before the Erica Star report. And now it's one of their favorite tracks. So why don't you uh, take us through some of your uh, insights from the track the past week? Any particular workouts that stood out to you? Well, um, one one winner actually was uh, actually not winner came in second. I think that guy was referring to was um, from the. The big race uh, over here. I know it wasn't here last week, so the week before for the Texas Derby. I'm sorry, not the Texas Derby, the um, Spite Town. So um, if you had, um, I cannot, get, I'm drawing a blank here. There's just so much going on. So it was a 21 to one shot for Asmussen. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the horse he was referring to. Um, so if you had that horse in your pick, I know Ottoman ended up winning the um, the Spite Town. So and Asmussen ended up getting the exacta. But um, if you had your horse in that, in that race, that's great. So kudos to you. Um, as for works this week, um, many good workers actually. Um, the one I guess I want to chime in on for this week is actually, actually no, I don't want to actually look at workouts yet. I actually want to go straight into racing. Um, we have made in special weights this week. Um, so I do want to um, talk about one horse that worked last week, Todd Chero is the name for uh gellner we're going um i'm going to chime the light on gellner tonight and also pitch so um gellner has a set of workers that um usually work together todd chero works with bwp spirit and these two horses are going to be running juno june 10th race seven it's a maiden special weight um one thing i like about todd, todd chero is has worked from the gates twice um seen it work 48 and 12 um three furlongs was 34 84 and that was back in may may 22nd that's a little and so, fast yeah really fast and from the gates you know even sometimes these fast works i have to kind of double look you know double check i have the other clocker with me and you know sometimes we just you know see what we both get but yeah that horse that day um he worked really well um so again, Todd Chero is somebody I'm looking at for mating special weight. He also has um, BWP Spirit in that race. Again, that horse has had consistent workouts, great workouts. He also worked 522 um, from the gate, went 4816 from the gate that day. And so 
great for furlongs work. They're both in that maiden special weight. Um, so I like how both those horses work. Um, Pitch is also in that race and he has three on a tree. It's the eight horse. And I like that horse because um, Alfredo Contreras, um, he's um, the jock riding for Pish right now. He's been on fire when it comes to these maiden special weights um, for Danny Pish. Um, he won one last week with I'm a Cowboy, somebody I had picked. If you um, looked at my um, picks from last week, uh, I hit the exact on that one. It was 10-3. Uh, uh, and so um, uh, it was I'm a Cowboy. So that one ended up winning with Pish and Alfredo. And so they have three on a tree and that made, made in special weight. And I think that horse is going to, you know, do great. Um, consistent workouts worked uh, just last week. Um, I'm sorry, this week, um, six, uh, the fifth. Went forty eight and went forty eight eighty, and worked again um five twenty nine forty nine fifty worked uh five twenty two forty nine ninety five um so I got to see those works um from all three of those horses on five uh, twenty second. I liked how all three worked. Um, usually when I make I'm making notes upstairs, I'll put a little star um by my uh, by the horses I like, you know, and I'll go back and look and uh, make sure that I have those picked, you know um. For the week of racing so that those made in special way um that race is going to be very interesting um i look forward to seeing that one um great workouts from all three of those horses um i told you all uh i'm gonna go ahead and talk about pish again he just he just dominates at these uh, baby races um i love it he's good um pish is actually somebody he's hands on with his horses i'll see pish out there working those horses uh working those two years old two year olds uh, out there sweating with them so again very very cowboy danny push is very cowboy i like how he does it um working with those babies um on june 9th so tomorrow he has um he's in another main and special weight race seven accelerating babe this horse i love um she's great it's for keen thoroughbreds um this horse um has been working consistently great um i actually got a little insight about this horse right before I started the show tonight. Um, somebody told me they paid 105 K for this horse and, um, they were supposed to train this horse, but, um, ended up going to Danny Pish. Um, and so he's been training this horse, great workouts. Um, he worked, I'm sorry, she worked on, um, the fourth, it was a sloppy track. We had rain guys. Um, so we had a sloppy track. We had the dogs out um one morning people aren't familiar with the dogs those are the cones um the track man will put the cones out to keep um workers from off the rail because the track is you know so sloppy and you know the inside rail could get dangerous could get deep so we stay away from there um but that horse worked on a sloppy track 49 and 10 and then 529 49 36 and then again on 522nd all these babies worked um 48.95 and that was from the gate so that horse is someone i know will win um the other clocker and i we kind of have a thing about that horse every time she like writes that horse down consistently gets the name wrong it's accelerating babe with a she writes e sometimes she writes x it's just something like that doesn't stick and i was like maybe you know there's stuff there's something about this horse that you know we have to bet on because it's just unusual that every time this horse comes up just there's always something off with its name she cannot like Get this get horse there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was another one. There was another horse like hold, that. Hold that on I one second, Erica, because Wayne Catalano was able to join us. So we'll get back to the Erica report in five minutes. Is that cool? Sounds right. good to we'll, me, we'll guys. Keep, we'll keep you right in here with us. Sounds good. All right. Hello, Wayne. How are you tonight? Can you hear us okay, Wayne? Oh, I can only hear you. Can you, can you hear us? Barely can hear you. You can barely hear us. All right, I'll, I'll yell tonight, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're just landing in New York, are you, for Aloha West? How's he training for the uh, for the Saturday? Well, I'm still traveling on. I got a little delay in the plane, but, yeah, we headed to New York. Aloha West, we have like seven in this weekend. Got them all in in one day, right when I got to fly around the country here. Oh, uh, yeah, so always, uh, you know, always got to push you when there's not much time, right? That's how life works. So... You know, there was a lot of Saturdays, uh, Mr. Catalano, where I was off at Arlington Park looking for your horses on the turf. What are your thoughts about or your opinion, the likelihood that there's going to be any horse racing around the Chicagoland area in five years? 
Uh, it's a very sad situation. I don't know what to think about that. Uh, I'm still hopeful that there'll be something going on in some kind of racing in Chicago. It's a great, great sports city, and for them not to have horse racing would be unbelievable. Hmm. Yeah, it, it looks to me like right now it's kind of tough. Sean, what's on your mind tonight? Yeah, so, I mean, we could say the same thing. Um, so what do you think about the five-horse field and your horse, Aloha West, and his chances? Well, he's up against some tough competition, but the horse is doing great. And we're looking forward to a real big race. Mm, absolutely. Are you are you concerned like the rest of the public about the short fields? Or I've been saying it's been going on for a while, and also the talent of the fields kind of kept some horses away. Well, a little bit of everything. It's a very tough horse in the race. It scares a lot of horses away. And of course, we all know a shortage of horses all over the country, so it's no big surprise. What do you think leads to the shortage of, of horses? How would you fix it? I'm sorry? So what do you think leads to the shortage of horses, and, and how would you fix it if you could do things your way? Well, there's nothing you can do about shortage of horses because they only breed 20,000 or so more horses a year when they used to do like almost 40,000. So sooner or later it was going to catch up and now it's it's now. Uh, absolutely, for sure. And, um, so do you see the, as somebody who's in the business the last couple of days, we've been talking about the Hissa. What are your thoughts about this uh, nationalizing horse racing through the uh, federal government? Um, I don't really know what to think about it. I don't. I don't like it. I don't think it's going to be good to the game, and uh, a lot of people will be confused and know how to handle it. But uh, there's a lot of help out there, so we'll get through it like everything else. Mm -hmm, absolutely, I think that'll be the case for sure. So where are you stuck right now? South Carolina, North Carolina, whatever they call this place. <laughs> I make a connection. I just, they shut the gate when I got to the door. Uh, so you missed the flight then? That's no fun. Yeah. Well, I didn't miss it. They were delayed coming in here. And when we got there, it was, um, it was like a minute late. And they shut the door. So are there any uh, horses in your stable, maybe a couple of, that are running under the radar, that uh, the horse players should keep an eye on going forward? Uh, we. This weekend will be big for us. We should win a few races this weekend. So if you're betting on my horses this weekend, you should make some money. Which one do you think stands out the most? Uh, I don't know. I got seven in, so I can't think of it right now. <laughs> well, that, it was, I yeah, sorry I to, to, look at them. to put I, you I on the know. spot like that. I'm going to sit in tomorrow. She looks pretty live in there. Pretty Which live one? horses all over. We're extremely live this weekend. Fantastic. You should, so, if you're betting them all, you should come out with a head. You should come out with a positive ROI, Sean. Any other thoughts, Sean? Wayne, so to let's talk about your days as a jockey and how hard of a transition it was from being the one on the horse's back to the one given instruction. Well, on their back was a lot of fun. I started out as a young young jockey, as most of them, and uh, it was a lot of fun and excitement and uh, as I was getting through it and toward the end, I was grooming myself to be a trainer. So it wasn't that big of a trance, trance and over until uh, being a trainer. And I had a lot of good people behind me. Jack Bamberg gave me some horses and, you know, I was with John Franks. And so we, we had a really good start. I've been very fortunate to have a lot of good people and a lot of good horses to train. So it, it was great, um, a great opportunity. And we took advantage of it and it's been a good run. Are you a trainer that gives the jockey a lot of instructions or kind of leave them do their own thing? Well, we used to give some instructions early on, but it didn't work as well. Um, we always said good riders, good jockey don't need one and a bad one can't follow them. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, for sure. So of all the that's things, kind of, of all the... Uh, kind of what, I joke about. what was that? Sorry, we couldn't hear you. What did you say? Can you repeat that? Yeah, so that's kind of what we joke about. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So of all the of all of the thousands of wins that you've had, which one stands out the most? Well, we, you know what? It's so hard to win. They all stand out great. Uh, of course, as a jockey, we we won only a few good races up along the way there. But as a trainer, you know, the Breeders' Cups 
I went in all those Breeders' Cups and a couple of other great ones and stuff. It's, it's been a great, great career on both ends. And like, once again, very fortunate to have the opportunity to train good horses and work with good people. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a number in mind as far as the number of wins that you want to get? Where do you see your yeah, career taking I got it? one in mind. I'm trying to get to 3,000 right now as a trainer. Uh -huh. so well, you're just one, a few I'm short of that. 3,000. I'm going to look it over from there. But for right now, we're going to turn it to 3,000, which is, I think we stand about 2,900 and I don't know how many, 50 something. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah, sure. I think you got about 40 to go. So, what's the plan when yeah, you I'm hit not sure 40? What it is. How are you going to celebrate when you hit the 3,000? I don't know. Yeah, you haven't made any plans 3, yet? Wow. Yeah, well, sometimes it goes. Sometimes those milestone ones, they, they uh, for whatever reason, they can be elusive, but we're sure they're going to come pretty soon. Sean, you got any more uh, any more questions, Sean? So, we, if there's anything you could change about the sport or help get it out more, help its popularity, what would you do? You know what? You know, they, they probably could do a little more advertisement, but I, for us to help the sport out, the sport's horse racing. And without horses, we don't have the sport. So we got to get the horses, and to get that, you have to breed more horses. Like I said, it catches up when you breed only 20,000 or whatever the number is compared to 40,000. So eventually it's going to catch up. So hopefully people start breeding more horses, and uh, which I think they are. So that's, that's going to be it right there. You have to get horses. Horse racing, you need horses. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of the name, right, horse racing. So... One final question for me, Wayne. You had a pretty good 2021, a nice bounce back year last year. What did you, what do you attribute that to? Uh, well, once again, we had some good people behind us. We had some very help. Our, our help situation is very great. Uh, we, they've been there for me all along, you know, without the help and the horses and the clients, uh, I couldn't have did it. So we got good people behind us, good horses. Good clientele, and uh, been very fortunate to have a lovely bride for forty some years stand behind me and working with me all the time. And uh, you know, you need a team all the way, and she's the biggest team player I got. No, well, that's always helpful that's for always sure. Sean, anything else, my man? Besides your normal tracks, Wayne, what are some of your favorite tracks to visit? Well, obviously, Arlington Park is my favorite track. And uh, Keelan and Churchill and all, all those tracks. You know, I've been to a few tracks. They're very nice. Um, anytime you win in there, good tracks. <laughs> How about you, uh, Erica? You got any questions? Oh, goodness. Uh, he put me on the spot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I felt bad. You're part of the team right here. You had a question. So. What's, the best, what's the best information you can give to um, an aspiring trainer, horse trainer, somebody who doesn't know too much about training horses? What is one thing that you would give that person? Some information on that. I would tell them it's a lot of work and a lot of time, and you put a lot of life effort into this game. It takes a lot of a lot of your life and support from the everyday, no matter what the holiday is. So be prepared to give up the rest of the, a normal normal living in life, because it takes up a lot. The seven day a week and being uh, unbelievable, I have to be there every day, and you know everybody counts on you from the horses on up. No such mm -hmm. thing as a dark day, right? I'm sorry. No such thing as a dark day, right? No, not in this, not in this game. <laughs> is it? Sounds good. Speaking of that, with the horses, do you, in your career, uh, give us one from each end. One horse that really surprised you that you didn't think would be all that great, and then one horse that you thought would be a lot better that just didn't turn out very well. Well, unfortunately, we had a few, we had a few too many of both. <laughs> we, we did. We had, we had a couple of really nice horses that, that um, we thought would be okay, and they turned out. We had some that, you know, thought that would be good that didn't turn out. So we had a little bit of both. But I, off the top of my head, I don't know. I'm just going to stay with the good ones and the positive ones. And, you know, those are the ones that keep me going. I've, I forget about the other ones. You got to, when you have a good day, you go on enjoying a bad day. You get over it real fast and go to the next day because there's plenty of them. Absolutely. Uh, quick question for you. What time are you going to be taking off out of uh, North or South Carolina, headed up for New York? When you get into New York? Yeah. 
I think I'm leaving here at 950 something. Oh, so you have a Not you have something. A, I'll get on about there. another hour, huh? Something. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we know that you're probably busy and kind of tied up. We appreciate you getting to us, uh, considering the circumstances. Wayne, we hope you have a safe trip and a great week weekend with those seven live horses, and you bring home seven wins. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, guys. Thank have you. A good rest right. of the day. Nice you as well, and a great trip to New York and a great time in New York. All right. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. That was a little bit tough, right? Because it was hard to hear him, him hard to hear us, but fantastic. But, we we're really grateful for him to make it like that. That was yeah, uh, absolutely. that was un that was actually uh, unexpected considering the circumstances. Yeah, we kind of gave up on that he was gonna be able to join us and he did. So thanks yeah. to Wayne for that. All right, sorry to interrupt you, Erica. Oh, it's fine. It's okay. He interrupted you, he put you on the spot. We'll Put do something else. You know, it's all right. You know, <laughs> under pressure is that. Uh, it, it's it's work, it's right? it's not a coincidence that Jerk and Rich both have four letters in them, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Huh? Uh -huh. Well, you know, they say uh, all humor, and for something to be funny, it has to have some truth in it. And you were both laughing, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I don't know you that well, at least not yet. <laughs> Indeed. All righty. So fire away, Erica. So we went through some horses that you liked. I went ahead and interrupted you. And now uh, the floor is yours again. Okay. Um, guess I'm just going to keep it short. Um, like I said, I was just interested in the maiden special weights this week. I know we have plenty of those. Um, and I just want to recognize one trainer um, from this past uh, previous re week, actually, small trainer, Daniel Durham. She runs um, Oakland Park. She runs her horses over there. Um, she had a horse run um, in a maiden spe special weight, um, race three on June 4th, 10th um, of gold. Ended up running really well, ran second. The only problem was it had a steady at the quarter pole. There was some interference. Um, like I said, I ended up coming in second, but that's a horse to look at in the future. Um, Daniel Durham comes in, um, has, doesn't doesn't have many horses, but she'll come in, find the right race, and do very well in those races. So, um, Daniel Durham, any signs of Tango Mis Papeles? John Miller. Um, actually, I did hear the story about that horse, John. Um, won't be racing again. I don't know if you two are familiar with uh, Tango Mis Papeles. Tango Mis Papeles. It's a two-year-old um, Texas bred horse. Um, ran here at Lone Star. Did amazing. Um, I know John Miller and I love that horse. Actually went um, to the farm, John. Um, was laid up and actually got hurt. So got hurt. So Tango Mis Papeles won't be running anymore. So um, we won't be seeing him much again. So he's going to be at a farm. Just so you know, John. But great horse, guys. Great horse. Um but that's all I have, unless you guys have any other questions. Um, there's, um, I, I mean, another horse that's in that I like, Pish. Like I said, it's going to be a week of Pish. I think Daddy Pish, um, he has Chaka running is another one. Chaka um, runs June 11th, runs against a Keithan horse I like. Um, R. Valentina will be running against Keithan. And um, that horse plays second on 529, so it's coming back and running again. Um that was a maiden special weight. So um, we'll see how that horse does. This is a maiden special weight as well. Um, but that um, Chaka horse is actually 20, 20 to 1. So that's a good long shot to look at for Danny Pish. Chaka in. What, in, in what race is that in? This is race. Um, let me see. This is June 11th. Race June 4. 11th? Yep. Race 4. Chaka. 20 to Chaka. 1 morning line. Yes. 20 to 1, Charlie. So it's been working well. Um. I think place uh, hit got third last time it's ran, um, but it's works been working well. Again, Pish, he does great at working his horses. Um, you know they're fit horses. Um, so again, I think Pish is gonna do amazing this week as well as Gellner. Um, so make sure you all put their money on them this week. Um, I hope you all can win some money too. You know. Mm -hmm. And Did if you folks want to wanna follow around, follow you on uh, Twitter. It's Erica double underscore because. She's like double mint. It's not one mint's not enough. You need two. Erica, always, Erica always. double underscore star on Twitter. Sorry, Sean, I interrupted you. Like I said, Rich yeah, and Turk a... both have four letters. <laughs> That's always a theme. It's okay. Um, did you get to meet uh, Sonny Leon? 
Uh, actually, I did not, guys. I was so oh. busy that day, but I did get something um for you all. So I mean, I don't know who I sent it to. So um, I have a couple of things to send to wherever. Give me an address, and I'll send some things. Um, but no, so I didn't have the luxury of meeting him, but I will. I know I will. Um, it's just busy that day, and I know he was signing autographs, but everybody beat me to it. But I did get something for you guys. So no, sweet. We appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. No problem. No problem. How's uh how's Todd Fitcher doing? Uh he's doing great. Um he actually worked um <sighs> raised no, before I'm... the raised before the flop. This was yesterday. Um that's a good horse. Raised before the flop um has been working um well. Um he worked those horses. Again, he works I just I, I don't know, maybe I'm just I, I favor him. Uh favor him. He's just an amazing trainer, guys. Um his workouts he does great like i said he does different types of training different from these you know other trainers um great horsemen so he's been doing well like i said he hits the board so um again just include him he's going to be coming um with the baby races here probably in the next couple weeks or so i um he had a couple new babies work last week so we'll be saying something here in a few weeks so keep an eye on him i'll speak about him next week probably so uh i do i again i don't want to speak about him too much i feel like i throw him in there every week but uh like I said, keep your eyes open for him, guys. Absolutely, 100% we will. And we'll keep an eye open for all the horses that you listed running this weekend at Lone Star Park. Until we meet again next Wednesday, Erica, thank you once again for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, no, thank it's you. our pleasure. Have a good night. <laughs> yep, you guys too. Good night. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. All right, Sean. So a show that was supposed to be maybe 20 minutes turns into an hour. How about that? Well, it never goes 20 minutes. We always say the interview goes 20 minutes, and usually that doesn't even happen. But, uh, hey, it turned out to be good. Uh, we were a little nervous. We pretty much gave up that Wayne wasn't going to make it, and he made it. So, Absolutely. Then, so that was, a, that was to, kind of a surprise. So I really we, do appreciate Wayne doing that. We had the technical issues with Erica, and that all got straightened out too. So, hey, all the issues got straightened out tonight. So we're good We're all that. headed in the right direction. <laughs> Hopefully it's a good omen for things to come in, the, in our picks this weekend at Belmont. Sean, all right. That takes us wire to wire on Wednesday, Sean's least favorite day, right? Yeah, least, definitely. Oh, you missed the pick five. The four ran third. Oh, that's I hate that man. That last leg, right? Uh, that 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 drives me crazy. So we let's just take it to an hour, real <laughs> quick. All right. So one quick question, Sean: Would you rather lose? So if you're going to do a vertical bet, would you rather lose the first one or the last one? Well, okay. So here's the deal with this. So because of what I was going to do and I normally do that I didn't do today and I would have caught it. Wait, wait, wait. Who's on first? What's on second? What? <laughs> yeah. So if you're on the last one, and I know nobody wants to do this in horse racing, but if you're on the last one, depending on what it pays, you can put $10 on another horse. So if you have four horses in the last race, there's eight horses. Now you can pick $10 on another long shot. You have five horses covered. So I'd almost rather get to that last race. Mm -hmm. You can You have a couple different things, but... I know what you're saying about get get it done in the first race and be done with it as well. But I just feel like if you get to the last race, you have a couple different options of what you can do to prevent that loss. Laura says, "Rip the bandaid off and go with the first one, baby." I yeah I you know I honestly, I'd rather lose the first one too, because when you lose the first one, right you you you, you go into it with you go into it with hope that you're going to win, but you've been in the game long enough to know. That, yeah, you know, the vertical bet, it takes a little bit of luck to get through it. So you feel like when you get through the first three, I got this. And one of the things that you do for sure when you get through the first three or four is when that last race in the leg opens up, you're looking at the will pays. Oh, yeah. And in your mind, you're already spending that money. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. The, so the, 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 it's a lot easier when it loses in the first leg and you don't know how much money that you weren't going to spend anyway. That is true. The only thing is when you lose that first leg, what do you do in race two? You well, go you still pay attention, together, right? Well, the thing that happens in race two, a lot of times when you lose the first leg, what happens is your horse runs second and then you win the pick three or pick four behind it. And you want to really pull your hair out. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, if I'm, if I'm out on the first race of a pick three or pick four, obviously the next race i'm putting something else together whatever is available pick three pick four so the only thing is if you do get to that last one it gives you options plus 
it's gotten you through three races that you might have not played any more pick threes or pick fours. Yeah, so the way I look at it, yeah, the, the way I look at it, if I lose, I feel like I'm not doing a good enough job handicapping. So if I lose the first one, I'm probably going to lose the second one too. I know mm-hmm. that's probably not the way to look at it, but I figure one of the things I try not to do is compound stupidity, right? I think just being dumb, <laughs> you know, making a bad pick. And then I don't want to back it up with another back pick and then take a two one dollar loss and turn it into a two dollar. You know, loss. the worst thing, and I do this all the time, is a pick five. You kind of try to so say the first race you do a pick five, you kind of keep it on the cheaper side. I don't want to throw that extra horse in for twelve dollars more. You lose because you didn't put that extra horse in. So what do you do in race two? Now you do a pick four and you spend twelve dollars plus more. When I could have just had the pick five if I would have just put. A few more of my in budget there. into that, so that that's uh, another. I mean, there's so many painful things. I mean, I could have put, I could have put five, but I could have done ten dollars on that hedge and put five bucks on two horses, and I would have got a hundred sixty dollars back, and I didn't do it. So to answer your question, Love wins. You say at Churchill Downs ends in July. Where will the next track for this colony go? John Miller says they'll head off to Saratoga Colonial or maybe Ellis Park. All right, Look, Sean. Ellis is not one I really care for. He'll play 5K to my four horse, paid 500 bucks with eight only, pay skinny tickets. So I fight another day. Sooner or later, it'll happen. I hit the pick eight at Arlington last year for 36 grand. Nice for a $25.80 play. I, uh, yeah, for me, I haven't had one of those yet, man. I have had a, I had one, right? We've talked about this before, where I had a $60,000 one for a five for 50 cents and i put like 56 dollars in it and somehow i missed the 99 to one shot that opened a ticket at golf stream park and i missed that one i missed the kentucky derby when giacomo won and i had told my friend look i like these couple horses let's put them on top like four of them and then we had we had hit that one and i was on my way to germany that day so most of the and, and there's a couple of others where i there was one at woodbine where i had a chance to to pull it like to take down the pool. But I had four out of five horses in the last leg. Y'all know which horse won. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where you got to hedge. That's where you got to put a lot of money, you know, on that other horse. Wow. Yeah, that, you know, that, that those type of things are the sort of things that can make a grown man cry. It ain't a whole lot that can make me cry, Sean. Yeah, yeah. All and right, Rich, Dave, Rich Strike debuted at Ellis Park last year. Maybe Rich Strike will take two out of three of the Triple Crown races. We'll find out. Uh, we'll uh, we'll find all that out on Sunday. We'll have our wagering guide out tomorrow. We'll certainly provide you with more information on how to get your hands on that. Of course, Sean and I will be back tomorrow with Acacia and Joel Rosario. Terry and I will be back at 12 o'clock to run through all the Belmont races. Tom and I will do Eagle something or another in Australia. On Friday, we'll be off Saturday and then be right back at it on Monday. Till then, folks, we hope everybody has a fantastic hump night. And we will see you tomorrow, no matter what you're doing for the rest of the night, until we catch up again with you tomorrow at 12 o'clock, Sean. We hope that it ends up in the winner circle. Absolutely. Have a fantastic night. Thanks for joining us, everybody.